In the hills of northeast Victoria, deep scars pockmarked the ridge lines, glittering quartz veins on the ridges that once echoed with picks and steam engines. This is Stanley, once called Snake Gully, part of the Beechworth Gold Precinct. Here, gold didn't simply sit in riverbeds. It formed in rock, in brittle fractures sealed by boiling fluids, in tiny particles trapped in milky white quartz. Today, we follow the rocks and learn how the gold got here. But first, let me be a child. <laughs> In other news, we're hard rock mining today. Yay! Yay! The goldfields of Victoria are part of one of the world's great orogenic gold provinces. Deposits formed during mountain building events when hot, mineral rich fluids moved through the crust and left behind gold in veins and loads. At Beechworth, that story plays out on a local scale. Quartz veins cut older sedimentary rock and were the source of much of the hard rock gold mined in the 19th and 20th centuries. Luckily, I have so many buckets now. Ugh. The only buckets I've got, Gadzi. So many buckets. Bucket boy! I'll have these. See you later. You're not doing all these buckets, are you? I don't know. Should we do all the buckets? That's a lot of buckets. Let me know in the comments below. Should we do all the buckets? Oh, well, that doesn't make any sense because they won't see this until We'll come back. back. Don't worry <laughs> about timelines. <laughs> Today's adventure is. Well, hopefully we're going to get back onto that really good vein of quartz that had a shit ton of gold in it. If we can get onto that and get a couple of buckets worth of ore, I'll be really happy. We're going to get onto it all right. Yeah, he bought his big ass yeah, hammer. Yeah, smash it up. <laughs> Guns do interesting things to Gadzies. The only problem with hard rock mining is it's really, really hard. It's actually quite difficult to do. You need your specialized equipment. None of it's cheap. None of it's easy to run. None of it's light. Orogenic or mesothermal gold systems form during regional metamorphism or deformation. Rocks are buried, heated and squeezed. Fluids are released during that metamorphism or driven from deeper lithologies to rise along faults and fractures. When those fluids cool or react chemically with the host rock, gold precipitates out, often together with visible quartz. These fluids are typically low salinity and moderate temperature, hundreds of degrees Celsius, and can travel for kilometers along the crust before giving up their cargo. These are the vein structures that I want to focus on today. This one and this one over here. Other people have been here since we've been here last and they've chiseled out more of the vein that we took. Shovel doggers be shovel dog and it's part of working on public land. That's cool. At least I know how to find it, right? I spent five years waiting to get a signal out of the wall here and in the last Hard Rock episode, I managed to get it out with the mad help of that unit and Kyle. But more Kyle. More mostly Kyle. <laughs> so because we know that there's good gold in this vein, we could go ahead and work it. But I don't think I'm gonna do that today. Because I know a lot of the ore that was in here is actually just on the ground here, dropped in front. And all of this quartz, literally all of it, has come from that face. So I'm gonna fill a bucket up with the material off the ground, because we know that's all. Imagine the rock as a sponge being squeezed with a syrup-like fluid. To unstick your buckets. Skill and finesse. The squeezed water is hot and mineral rich. It finds cracks and flows through it. And when it cools a little, quartz and gold like to drop out. Over time, repeated pulses fill the fractures with quartz, and sometimes, if conditions are right, rich concentrations of gold. In Beechworth, the gold is primarily held in the slates and sandstones of the Lachlan Fold Belt, which were folded and faulted during multiple orogenic events. Geological surveys have revealed abundant quartz veins and structural complexity, the exact setting where mesothermal gold prefers to accumulate. That's blasphemy. What did you just say? Could be that. That's unacceptable. Go season that. It's not, no, you're not doing a video with an unseasoned pan. Like the f this guy's going to be going in here with an unseasoned pan on my watch. <laughs> Go get a rock. In a completely smooth pan. And then your video would have been, I found no gold because it all fell oh out. God. <laughs> so lame. Kids these, so kids lame. these days. Kids. So oh lame. my God. Get all the other guys. Prospective dads, don't let me do this. Is that better? I mean, it's not your best work, but it's acceptable. <laughs> God, <laughs> oh, God. 
You can also see what geologists call Gossen, a rust-coloured iron oxide that marks the sulphide minerals once altered and weathered. Gossens are often excellent surface indicators for subsurface sulphide-rich veins, and sulphides commonly host tiny, locked-up particles of gold. Gold is carried within hydrothermal fluids as a dissolved particle. Once these fluids complex with sulfur and chlorine, and the pressure and temperatures change, for example when the fluids expand into an open fracture or cool against a host rock, gold will no longer be soluble and will precipitate out. Recent research has added a fascinating detail. Laboratories and field tests alike suggest that seismic activity and the piezoelectric effect in quartz may help concentrate nanoparticles of gold into larger nuggets in some settings. There's a vein that runs right through the middle of that rock and it looks really good, so we're definitely taking that. Ah, oh, got in the bucket! So when you see That's pieces not. of gold in quartz, you're looking at the result of chemistry, heat, pressure, and sometimes just a little bit of tectonic drama. Yes! All this is where our best gold is in the really dirty quartz. Typically, you don't find good gold in buck white quartz. Sometimes you will, most of the time it's in this stuff. So you did get gold. Yeah, I sucked it up already. Yeah, but you're welcome. <laughs> you don't know anything, mate. Don't give up your day job. Obviously, we all want to know. Ah! What's in this rock? But we're going to do that with a metal detector. Typically speaking, the gold in this area isn't really detectable by metal detectors. It's too fine. There can be a lot of it, but it's really small and the machine can't see it. But occasionally you do get a bit. So we're going to double check because this has been worked more. Maybe something was revealed or lost. Gold isn't evenly distributed along a vein. It tends to concentrate in structural traps, bends in a vein, intersections with other faults, or areas where the vein passes from hard rock into softer, more reactive rock. In Beechworth, cross-cutting structures and fold hinges create those traps, making certain reef segments much richer than their neighbors. A perfect example is where two veins intersect. Historically, miners focused on these spots. They knew by experience that the gold had a habit of pooling there. I'm calling this bucket absolutely full because I have to carry it out of the bush and that's that's far enough. Moving right along. I need you, and need you. Ow, sharp. Whilst we've done a bunch of sampling from around here, we haven't really done too much from over here and we've had a rock collapse. This has fallen down recently and then been washed by the rain. First of all, look at the size of that bug. And more importantly, we've got exposed quartz veins that have never seen the light of day, man, nor dinosaur. Gansy, the dinosaurs did not see this, I promise they you. Did. They but, did. I'm pretty sure they did. I think this big crystal bug is going to be accessible. I say crystal bug, it's just a sulfide bug. There's a crack, so everyone put your safety squint on. If you don't know what a safety squint is, we have t-shirts in the description below that will help you figure that out. There's no OH&S around here. <laughs> Huzzah. Yeah! <laughs> that was just a big gnarly pocket. Now gold needs iron to drop out when it comes to quartz, and there is plenty of iron in that. You could practically weld on it. Over time, the weathering process breaks open quartz veins and liberates the gold, which can then be transported and concentrated by water. That's why the Beechworth area has both hard rock or load deposits and rich alluvial flat deposits in the creeks and gullies. Hard rock miners crushed auriferous quartz to free the gold from its host, while the alluvial miners relied on gravity to separate the flakes of gold and nuggets from the gravels. Today, we're crushing small auriferous quartz by hand. The same principle as the 19th century battery, only scaled down. Liberate the gold, concentrate it, and pan it out. This has been exposed for a while because we've got moss growing on it, but in here, this is all fresh. There's still mud caking it from where this collapsed came from. So I've got my bucket tucked up underneath this vein here. We're gonna chip that off. We have made some really cool improvements over the last couple of videos. Over 104 people subscribed to my last video. Thank you so much. But still, 68% of people who watch my videos are not subscribed and subscribing is completely free and helps distribute my videos to new people so if you're so willing please consider hitting that subscribe button so you can see more of me chiseling away at rock faces right we've got one bucket of premium grade ore that we know has gold in it 
one experimental bucket and that's about the capacity for what i can do for hard rock mining at a hobby level on a daily basis without investing about ten thousand dollars for the next level setup i mean if enough people buy pay dirt and gold ore off the old moldy i'll absolutely invest into doing hard rock at a larger scale but we're not there yet Miners who worked Snake Gully and Stanley followed the same geological clues. They sank shafts into reefs, built batteries to crush the rock, and chased the richest segments. The Beechworth District produced both spectacular auriferous quartz yields in some reefs and enormous alluvial returns in the creeks, a testament to the area's geological fertility. This is the unknown gold vein. Well, wow, potential gold vein. I want to see what is in this one first, because I'm fairly confident we're going to get gold in the other one. I just don't know how much. We've never sampled this vein before, so if we don't get anything, it's not going to be a terrible surprise. Most quartz, even in gold mines, doesn't have any gold in it. You've got to get the exact right vein. I am seeing sulfides though, and obviously we just didn't cook it long enough. We didn't, we didn't do what I was meant to do properly. I'll revisit my setup and work that out. And we did get gold, but I don't even know if you're going to be able to make this out. There is one tiny little dot right dead center of the screen, but that very well could just be contamination uh, from tooling from the crusher. So that is pretty much our bust. Regardless of what we do or don't get in this pan, I do love hard rock mining. It's always a surprise. It's way more challenging than alluvial mining. And I think that's where the reward comes from. Let's have a look. Let's see if we were rewarded for our efforts. We've got a couple of big pieces of stone in there. That's just to do with my terrible crushing job. That piece looks like you could damn well weld on it. Come on, baby. Oh, I can see gold. Yes, ah, we got gold. And I mean, that's just hard rock mining for you, right? You, you look, even in the same exact vein where you were getting really good gold, there is a good chance that the gold can just peter out. And that's often why old timers walked off gold mines, walked out of the gold fields and never came back. And it's very, very fine gold. There's a couple of little pickery pieces there, but for the most part, we're talking about maybe a 0.1 of a gram, about $20 worth of gold, which certainly monetarily is not worth the effort that I went to in order to get that. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of gold prospecting from the time that we started digging gold out of the ground right up until the current day. Feast or famine? And today, it looks like I'm eating two-minute noodles.